This time on the channel, we're going to set up text to speech from scratch. So we can do this. Ding dong, there is someone at the gate. There's someone at the gate. Quick, we got to get there. Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for joining me. And this time I'm going to set up text to speech or TTS sometimes it's also called. And quite a few comments on my previous videos have said, oh, you can do this with text to speech, or you can do that. And I've just never actually gotten around to using it. So today that will change. And then there's the other part of it is where <laughs> A lot of the tutorials that I see on text-to-speech is all about how to do things differently and, you know, randomize what it says output or using parameters. Or There's very few tutorials, well, I haven't found any, that show you right from the start how to set it up. And that's what I'm going to do or show you. So that's the plan. All right. I am in Home Assistant. And the first thing we need to do is enable text-to-speech for the whole system, for all of Home Assistant. So I'm going to go to my file editor. I've already done this, but I'll show you where I set it up. And in here, right at the top, you can see there is text-to-speech TTS. Then I need to give it a platform, so you don't have to use Google. You can use others as well, And but it, I'm using Google. Then you can set it to caching, so it will actually cache some of the um, sentences, I guess, which is nice so it doesn't have to redo them because it takes a little bit of time the first time um, where's the caching directory so it'll actually store the i think the mp3s but anyway voice files to the drive um, how long are we storing them with 300 seconds in case it happens again and then the service is called google say and that's the service that home assistant provides to use uh, google translate or google voice and then the base url which i don't think i need but someone said to put it in there is the um, the IP import of Home Assistant itself. So I don't think I need that yet, but anyway, I'm gonna leave it in there. So that's what we need, and this is exactly from the documentation, which is here, text-to-speech. You can see this is how to configure it, set it up, and here's the exact uh, example, which I've just copied in, right? Oops. So that's how you set it up, and then you gotta restart over system, load it up, but now it's ready to use text to speech. So I'm going to do that in Node Red. So that's still my favorite automation tool. Now there are other ways you can do it, but eh, I prefer Node Red. I like the visual style of it. I like the, the logic flow that you can see rather than just read it. So that's, uh, that's why I use it. And if you wanna know how to use Node Red, uh, there is a link to a previous tutorial that I made as well. So um, the first thing I want to do is when someone rings the doorbell, so my G4 doorbell, which I'm using as a gate in the comp, there's a video for that as well, of course. When someone rings that, I want there to be an announcement that someone's at the gate because I don't always see it on my phone, to be honest. So if I go here to the tab that says gate, and here, so here's my gate flow. And I want, when the intercom rings, I want there to be a notification. So all I have to do is simply click call service or, or drag on a call service uh, feature here, feature, node, you know. And this will be a TTS ding dong. Oh, ding song, ding dong. The domain in here is TTS. That's literally the domain of that service. And the service is going to be Google Say, because that's the one I've set up. So I'm going to use that. And then the entity is, well, your media player. So in this case, I'm going to use the one I've got right next to me, which is a Google Nest Hub for Lenovo. So I'm going to use a media player, and it should be here somewhere. There it is, Office Display. So that is that one right here. So I'll show you that as well. And then I want some data, because it's, it's got to say something, obviously. Um, so I usually load the example data, because I can never remember what how these look. And my name is Hannah. Well, we're not going to later have it say that. So we're going to go ding dong. Someone. Oh, there. Oh, there is someone at the gate. That'll do. 
And then we can set the language. Which is kind of, for some reason, the default is Russian. Uh, I'm going to change it to English. I don't think you need that parameter in there. I think it's optional. And then there's some options which I'm not going to fill out. I don't even know what they are, to be honest. I haven't used them. And that that is it. That That's it for this example. So, of course, I need to... Um, Actually, ring. Actually, we want to do a test here first. Manual test, right? So I'm going to deploy that, and then I've got it right here. Oh, that's the screen. So let me just turn it up so you can hear it. And it should come through in the microphone. All right. So I'm going to do a manual test here. I'm going to click on this. See if it works. Ding dong! There is someone at the gate. <laughs> that's pretty loud, but you do, you get it. That, that's all it does, right? So, but obviously I don't want it to just be there. I want it to be from here, right? So when the intercom rings, I want this to say it. Um, now, I actually want it to say it in the kitchen as well. So what I can do is can, I can add a, as many as I want. Media player kitchen, which should be here, kitchen display, because that's often where we are. So then that will say it as well. And for good measure, I'm going to put it in Fiona's office as well, which is oh, Office Display 2. Right, that's just next door, that's Fiona's office. So now that's done, it's gonna play it on three different um, Nest Hubs whenever someone rings on the gate intercom. So that's kind of neat, that's pretty simple. But like, it really is that simple. And I couldn't figure out exactly how to do that because there was no tutorial. That didn't make sense to me. Anyway, I figured it out. And hopefully, it's useful for you too. That's kind of a basic example. Let's try and make it a little bit more complicated. All right. So I'm going to go back to my water tanks. Here's a massive flow. I'm actually going to do a different video on that. If it's already done, the link will be right there. There. But if it isn't done, it's coming. Right, this is on, on my schedule. But anyway, let's not go through this. What I want to do, I want to know when the bore pump turns off, because that's pretty important in terms of water flow. But I also want to know when it turns on, right? So I'm going to do the same, but the change here is that I want the variable in it. I want to know what the, what the volume is that's, that's triggering this, right? So I'm going to use a current state. I'm going to drag it over here. Uh, we're going to do off first. And actually, there we go. Bit close. Anyway, there's a lot of stuff going on here. So we want to get current bore tank volume. And the entity is going to be bore tank uh, where is it? There you go. Volume. Uh, liters, rather. Uh, not volume. Uh, liters. Because the volume in my world is how much it can hold, not how much is in it. So, And then I don't do anything with this. Now the payload's going to come through in message.payload. is going to be the entity state. So that's the bit I need. I need the state of this, the, the what it's actually measuring. Um, but I don't, I don't have any conditions on it. I just want the volume. So that's that part of it. And then we need the text-to-speech, which is over here. And again, just like before, I'm going to say TTS uh, bore tank off and volume, because that's oh, in liters. <laughs> Come on, got myself. Come on, if I could type. There we go. And the domain is TTS, service is Google Say, and the entity is going to be uh, the kitchen as well. Go kitchen uh, media player. I'm just going to leave it at that for now, and then load the example data again, and then we're going to say bore tank is off, and it has, and then we're going to use these mustache or curly brackets. It's called mustache templates as well for some reason. And we're going to put in payload because remember that's what it was before the message the payload that's where the where it's going to be and then we'll say liters right there we go um and then one thing i did oh hang on <laughs> we're not russian 
let's just change the language to English, otherwise I won't know what it's saying. Actually, it's just going to say with a Russian voice and it'll sound weird. Um, I'm just going to put it on the office display here as well, so we can hear it in the microphone. All right. So here we go. Uh, office. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Actually, I need to boot media player because there's many. There we go. That's the one. All right. So one change here that took me forever to figure out, which wasn't obvious. This little thing here, you can even have a J expression, which I'm not sure what notation that is. It looks like JSON. It isn't JSON. If you don't change this, it'll just read out bore tank is off and it has payload liters, which is not useful. You have to change it to JSON and then it'll actually interpret this correctly. Not sure why. Maybe someone in the comments can tell me why that is. Um, and then we can click done. And then we just got to actually uh, doo -doo -doo, put that up here and then there. So that'll be a different flow, right? So if it's not already off, then we're going to um, go through here and turn it off as well as uh, put that um, text to speech sentence out via the media players. That's it. And don't forget to deploy. Okay. So what happens now is that if the bore tank volume is uh, low or it's no, not uh, high, rather over thirty-five thousand liters, I think it is, and it's not and it's not peak power or it's peak power usage, rather, then it'll turn off. So what I can do is that I can just take my phone here and I'll turn the bore pump on, and then we should be able to test it turning off, and we should get that message in here. So I'm going to turn it on. There we go. Give it a second. And then I can just trigger this manually. I don't have to wait for it to trigger. Right. So I'm going to trigger this and then we should hear that go through. Because it is actually peak power now. It's from 3 till 9 p.m. Which is 4.20 p.m. Right. So I'll trigger this and we'll see what happens. Bore tank is off and it has 31,607 liters. There you go. And again, not difficult, but it took me forever to figure that JSON detail out. You gotta have it in JSON notation. So, and with that, I can see the numbers here are a little bit off. So I'm gonna just do that. There we go. So that now means I can get a variable into my text to speech, right? And I can now go through and do this for Turn your bore tank on, uh, other, you know, bullshit tanks when that turn on and off, etc, etc. And I can get liters out, or I can get whatever it is. Um, I'm considering maybe doing it with an air quality as well, so I can get the air quality number when there's an air quality alert, because um, I might want to know that. But it's really, really handy being able to put these variables into the text-to-speech. But that's a really short video because that's all there is to it at a basic level. Now you can go to the nth degree and do all sorts of things. There's many tutorials on YouTube about how to uh, make this much, much more refined. You can put in your own um, voice files, MP3 files. Uh, I saw someone that had an actual ding dong sound coming through when the doorbell was rung. Those sort of things you can do as well. But for now, this is all you need for the basic text to speech to get that to work. And it is super helpful. I can't believe I haven't done it before. But uh, anyway, so if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Hmm. I do a lot of these videos. I hope they're all helpful. Um, I love the interaction, so please do comment in um, the comments section. And I make an effort to reply to all comments um, as much as I possibly can, because that's how we learn. And that's what makes it cool. But uh, I really hope that was useful. It took me forever to get around to this, but now it's here and Anyway, I'm going to do a few more of these text-to-speech automations or, or things, whatever you want to call them, flows. So I hope you will too. Other than that, I'll see you in the next video.